During the time phase, no one can level up. We only have one soul shard, so we'll just start activating our heroes. First thing we're going to do is activate Thorgar. Thorgar is going to use his power to heal Ariel by two, so that way she has more than one health. This means we'll have to put his heal wounds on cooldown, and Ariel moves from three damage to one. Yeah! We're then going to have Thorgar move one, two, and stop right here. No enemies on the board, so that's the end of his activation. Let's go to Ariel. Ariel is going to use her three movement to go one, two, three, because it's harder to get up here. You can see this um, hindrance icon. So that took two action, or two movement to get in here. And then she's gonna use her action to do a search action. It's the first time you'll see a search. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna roll a blue die. If we get a lightning bolt, we get a treasure. If we roll a star, we get a loot token. If we roll neither, we get nothing. Okay, Chip Theory, don't let me down. Yes, we got a lightning bolt. That means we get another treasure card. I've not got, never gotten this many treasure cards. So here's the treasure deck. We'll just split it in half a couple times. Okay, ooh, what did we get here? This is Icy Knives. It's arcane, and it does one point of damage. You roll three blue dice. You use it as an action instead of a combat. That's awesome. And guess who can hold this? Uh, Icarus can hold this. The problem is, is he's probably not gonna wanna give up his shield. Oh man, still, this is great. She'll put this in her backpack. That's the end of Ariel's activation. And once again, no enemies on the board. So no need to draw an encounter card. So now last but not least, Icarus is gonna go. And he's gonna go one, two, three. And then he's gonna dash for his first action, because remember he has two, and he's going to dash to get a fourth movement and he's gonna move through this door, which means he immediately has to draw a trap card. And we have lightning. Unless save, each hero within two areas suffer one HP and become KO'd. Well, you know what's awesome? Icarus, the whole reason I wanted him to open the door, he's gonna use the Chosen by Gods. This is automatically available to him, doesn't take an action, and he can automatically succeed at a save roll. It's gonna take two uh, time to come back, but that's totally worth it. Unfortunately, within two, one, two, we do have Thorgar, so he's also gonna have to roll for a save. Thorgar's save is a star. Can we get it? Oh my god! Oh, I love you, Chip Theory. That is a star. He is not affected. Man, they just dodged that lightning like nobody's business. We're still not done. We have to reveal this shadow token. And of course, I knew it was going to be this, this way. So there is one citizen one. Yeah, that was the one that we discarded. So we're going to have a double spawn here. So our entire um, gremlin deck was discarded. So I'll just shuffle these up. And we're going to have both a blue gremlin with power, great, and a green gremlin in this room. And our enemy power, let me draw this, is going to be all attacks against this enemy cause minus one hit. Oh, the blue enemy will be controlled by uh, Icarus and the green enemy will be controlled by Thorgar. We'll place both of those enemies in this room and remove this token. And Icarus, of course, moves in here. Now, I just, I love Icarus, you guys, because he's considered as two heroes here. So it's two against two, no domination by the enemies, and we still have another action because we leveled up. So we're gonna use our second action to focus, and we're gonna take out this green enemy, I think. So we should get one success for focusing. In our broadsword, we get to roll two red dice. All right, let's see what we get. Come on, attacks. Perfect, two of them. Two plus the one guarantee, Sayonara Green Gremlin. The Green Gremlin is no more. We will drop a five crowns in the room and we'll remove his miniature. Yeah, we have to deal with the Blue Gremlin, but now we'll be easily able to dominate him and that'll essentially negate that um, hard skin. We have here, Scout. Activate one enemy, otherwise spawn one enemy. Well, that Blue Gremlin is going to try and attack Icarus. Attack him with claws, and he has minus one armor for Icarus. And he does one point of damage. Icarus's one armor still protects on that. Golly, that will end Icarus's turn. 
Now, since we have no event card flipped up, we have to draw the next event card and we get Carnage. Until the next event phase, the first attack of each hero and enemy inflicts critical. Oh, I get to show you guys critical. That's not good. <laughs> well, maybe it's good for us if we can hit that blue gremlin first. Oh, but we have to spawn. So we have three heroes, one enemy is out, minus another enemy, so we're just gonna spawn a single enemy. And let's see what we get. We get the other green gremlin. Oh, not bad. That green gremlin will spawn at this gate. And like I said, normally we'd have to roll to determine that, but there's only one gate open, so easy for us to decide. Well, everyone, nobody is perfect, and that especially includes me. <laughs> I completely forgot when I was reading what happened when we got to story event area one. We should have put fire tokens here and here of twos that would have moved down to one and then to zero. At this point, I'm not gonna try and change it, but just know that you'll have fire here that slowly burns out and that could damage people. So I apologize for the error, but let's just move on. The other thing I didn't tell you is what the day effect is in the storybook, and the storybook just says the day event is no additional effects. So that's why all damage is regular. All right, let's get back into the game. During our time phase, first of all, Icarus has this troll's ring goes down to one damage. Also, this talent will slowly start to refresh. So it's cooled down to only one more time before he can use that save feature again. And of course, here we have Thorgar, and he will refresh his heal wounds. Our first hero we're gonna activate is Thorgar, and he's gonna immediately use his heal wounds for his one action again, and heal um, uh, Icarus to full. Icarus can now remove that final one health, and he is set to go. Then Thorgar, being the divine man himself, isn't gonna leave Ariel to this gremlin. So he's going to take two steps into here so he can attack and give a critical to this green gremlin. He needs to do three points of damage with two red and two blue. Really should be able to do that. And you know, he decided he helped Icarus enough with healing him, he's gotta help Ariel because Ariel could get really hurt by that gremlin. Let's see, one, two, three, four, Pfft, yeah. Don't even have to draw the critical. He annihilates that green gremlin. Hammer one, gremlin zero. <laughs> and another soul shard. That's two, we just need two more and we can level up another hero. Ooh, I'm getting excited. Oh boy, we drew fight. Activate three enemies. Well, there's only one on the board, but then it says shuffle the encounter deck with the discard pile and then discard this card. So our huge discard pile here now will get reshuffled in with our encounter deck. And don't forget, this attack is going to be critical, which I'll show you how it works. So first, we'll roll these two dice. Okay, two points of damage, two lightning bolts. They don't do anything, fortunately. Icarus has one shield left over because, of course, the blue negates one of his armors. So he'll roll for the second armor. And he failed, just like he normally does. Icarus will take one point of damage, and then we have to draw from this critical bag. So we'll try and grab one. Gosh, they always make these bags so gosh darn tiny. And we drew, oh, I don't even know what that is. I'll have to look that up. I believe what this is saying is that he can now not use lightning bolt effects. And this is a condition. It's gonna stay on him for the rest of the quest or until he dies. So that means if he tries to do a reroll of defense with his chainmail or his broadsword for an extra hit, it's not gonna work with lightning bolts. That is a terrible condition. Well, after that terrible event just happened, <laughs> Ariel is gonna go next, and she's gonna go one, two, and then she's gonna use her ice manipulator to try and beat the bejesus out of this um, blue gremlin. And remember, this is gonna be a critical attack. She rolls one red die, and three blue dice because she's using the level one. Come on, big hits. Okay, she gets one, two, three hits and one star. Hmm. Three plus two is five. That's gonna be more than enough to take out that gremlin. Even if that gremlin has all attacks on this or minus one, Five minus one is four. This is not a slash attack. Takes out that gremlin. Fortunate for us, that gremlin is also gonna drop another soul shard. So that's three. We only need one more and someone else can level up, 
which will be awesome. I of course really should have used her action to focus to add one more hit there, because there really isn't anything else that she can do with her action, but she defeated him anyways, so I'm not worried. That's going to end her turn, and there are no enemies on the board, so no need to draw an encounter card. But that's going to end this round. Moving on to the next event phase, we'll simply discard this Carnage. Man, that critical on Icarus is terrible because all of his actions are with lightning bolts. It could have been anything else and it wouldn't have been that bad, but ugh. Let's move to the time phase. No one can level up, but Icarus's um, save, his Chosen by Gods, refreshes. Ariel's Ice Manipulation will go down to only one turn till it refreshes. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Icarus does get to heal his one point of damage, so he's back to full health. And of course, Thorgar gets his healing back. Thank goodness, he'll probably heal himself this time. I think I'm going to start out with Thorgar. And he's actually, instead of healing himself, going to use his dash action. So he can go one, two, three, four, and get in the same room as Icarus. And then he's going to snag this five coin, and then he's got one five coin in his supply, so he's going to return these two to get a ten crown in his supply. I'll put that over there. Unfortunately, that's all he can do. No enemies, though, so now we're going to move to Icarus. Okay, we all know something bad is going to happen here. <laughs> Icarus, though, is at full health. He's got eight health because he's a level two. Yeah, he doesn't have any lightning bolts, but I still think we're going to take the step in. So we're going to walk right into this room and draw the second story event card. And hopefully this time I won't miss anything. The cathedral's entrance is a battlefield, the bloody floor strewn with the bodies of guardian clerics and the gremlins. Near the sacred altar, High Cleric Claudius is surrounded by gremlins. But before anyone can react, one of the creatures lashes out, driving its claws deep into the old cleric's chest. The light in the eyes of this gremlin is bright and wickedly alive, betraying a malevolent intelligence that marks it as a chief. The heroes cannot do anything but avenge the High Cleric and kill the Abomination. Place the red gremlin in story event 2 area. Okay, and I'm going to read all of this first before I do anything. Open the shrine in waypoint 2. Awesome. If there are more than 3 heroes, spawn one enemy in the story event area. Okay, nope, there's uh, less than 4. Um, spawn people minus enemies, enemies in the waygate area. So I'm assuming the red one will spawn first. So then 3 minus 1 is 2, so we're going to spawn 2 gremlins in, um, the, uh, in that area. And then place the story event 2 card on the top of the event deck, and then resume play until the red gremlin dies. Here we go, you guys. Are you ready for this? <laughs> our mini boss, almost. Here's our red gremlin, and here's our red gremlin card. So he's going to come with a power card. That's what this denotes. He is resistant to slash, he's got one armor, and he rolls two defense dice for any other damage he takes, up to a total of two. Uh, he has, when we defeat him, he'll drop two loot tokens and two uh, um, soul gems, and he has a total of six health because we're playing with three players. And his power is swiftness. At the beginning of each event phase, before managing the event card, roll a blue die, if it's an attack, activate this enemy. Enemy, Oof, oof. That could be bad, too. This red gremlin is bad news. He has quickness. At the end of each enemy turn, if this enemy was not activated, activate it. So he's swift and quick. <laughs> Banding, two. If enemies control its area, claws inflict plus two. And he has sharp spines. So if this enemy suffers damage, all heroes in its area suffer 1 HP. That means that Icarus's 2 armor isn't going to help with that because they suffer 1 HP. Armor does not prevent suffering. <laughs> that sounds funny, but that's true. And his attack is 3 red dice minus 1 armor. Oh boy. Next, we need to open this shrine. So now if a hero dies, they can come here to regenerate. We're going to have to spawn 2 gremlins in this location. Our first one is going to be a blue gremlin, because of course we wouldn't want a green one. That would make life way too easy. So we'll put a blue gremlin here, and then we'll shuffle up our discard pile, and we'll draw this one. And <laughs> it's a blue gremlin with a power, and his power is going to be, if this enemy deals damage with any of its weapons, it heals 2 HP to itself. Oh! 
<laughs> okay, and that's going to be controlled by Thorgar since the red gremlin is controlled by Icarus. And we'll place that second mini here. <laughs> we have our work cut out for us. We also need to place the Story Event 2 card on top of our event deck, once again giving us just a little bit more time. So here's the thing, I really would like to get this treasure if I can, but it's not guaranteed. I can't open this door while I'm engaged. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do, because I can't, Icarus can't move right now, but he can attack. And he's gonna use one of his two actions to focus that attack. So he's gonna attack the red gremlin. Unfortunately, he's using his broadsword, which is a slash, so that'll get minus one, but it is what it is. Now remember, we get no benefit for any of our lightning bolts because of that critical. Gosh, that was a terrible critical. So we got two successes, that's pretty good, plus the one for dominating, plus the one for um, doing our focus, minus one because it's a slash. So we'll do three points of damage. We actually did half the damage that we need to to that red gremlin. Hold up there, Colin. <laughs> However though, we have one armor here, so it's only two points of damage, and he gets to roll two blue dice for the two damage we're potentially doing. And he rolls one shield, so we actually only hit him for one damage. We'll place that on his card, and not only that, he has those um, sharp spines, so Icarus is also going to take one point of damage. Well, this actually works. We have Bloodlust. Activate all wounded enemies, and we have one wounded enemy, the Red Gremlin. He would have activated anyways, so this actually works out okay. So the Red Gremlin doesn't go for money, he goes to attack the weakest uh, hero. But he's already engaged, so he's just going to attack Icarus, and he's going to use three dice, already negating one armor. And of course I dropped the die, sorry about that. Let's see what he gets. Okay, nice. Not only one point of damage! Seriously? One point, Icarus still has one armor, so he blocks it. <laughs> Not bad. This is gonna be downright folly, but when I'm looking at these rooms, you can see here that Ariel, who's the only hero left, would have no line of sight into this room. So in order to attack this red gremlin, she has to actually go into this room. We don't really want her to go in this room, <laughs> but I think I'm going to because I'm gonna have her use her action to open up this door because she can evade this green gremlin or red gremlin since there's going to be three heroes in this room. So we're gonna use her movement, one, two, and then she's going to use a free action to evade this red gremlin and bash open with her action this door. But that means she's gonna to have to draw a trap, which could be bad. Oh man, she draws the darts. Each hero within two area is attacked by one per soul rank divided by two, minus two armor. So the soul rank divided by two is gonna be a one. So essentially they're each attacked by one. And let's see, we'll do um, Icarus first. Since it's minus two armor, he's gonna have to roll for one shield. And he fails. So he takes one point of damage. That puts him at two damage in total so far. Then this is for Ariel. Come on, shield. Come on, shield. Yes! Okay. And then this is for Thorgar. And he gets a shield. Awesome. So it was just Icarus who got hit, which isn't terrible. This means, though, she succeeded in getting into this room, which is insane. Now, once again, she's not going to be able to shoot range from in this room into here because these, these air, um, X's are blocked by the wall. But at least she'll be able to bash open this chest next round. Let's draw our encounter card. Oh, we have Corrupted Will. Activate all F enemies, otherwise the active hero must shift one of their used powers back one. Oh, that sucks. So her awesome power here gets pushed back to two time to refresh. But this means no enemies would technically activate except for the red gremlin because of this quickness. At the end of each enemy turn, if this enemy was not activated, activate it. <laughs> So we're still gonna have to roll three red dice, seeing if how much damage Icarus is gonna have to take. Let's see, ooh, one, two, three points of damage, and he has one armor that's left over. He can roll two defense dice. Come on, shields. <gasps> one shield, that's awesome. So only it takes one point of damage, that puts him at three damage total. Now we're gonna move to the event phase, but we have to look at this swiftness from the red gremlin. 
At the beginning of each event phase, before uh, managing the event card, roll a blue die. If it's attack, activate the enemy. Eh, it's a shield. Yes! Don't have to worry about swiftness. For our event, we we'll simply discard this card here, and we'll start our next round. Starting the next time phase, the first thing is Icarus can heal by one, so he'll go back to two points of damage. I love this troll's ring. Ariel is going to cool down this power down to here, which is still a bummer. I still can't believe she doesn't have that available to her, but it is what it is. And Thorgar's, Thorgar is all set. The first hero we're going to activate is going to be Thorgar. He is going to take one step into this room. He has one action, and I'm trying to decide if he wants to do max damage. He only has four health, though. <sighs> should we heal? We probably should heal. I'm going to play on the safe side. We're going to use the heal wounds, and we're going to heal the two wounds that Thorgar has right now. That's going to go... You know what? Never mind. I'm not going to do that, because... We can have Icarus soak up the wounds from this red enemy. So I think instead of doing that, we're going to use our action to power up our hit and try and hit this red gremlin hard. We have two successes already, one for dominating the room and one for focusing. Let's see what else we can do. Okay, we've got one, two, three, plus those two are five, plus one lightning, no, two lightning bolts, Seven damage. Ooh, I like it. Seven damage. Actually, the more I think about it, I'm instead going to use the bash effect. So I'm only going to do five damage with the bash effect. The bash effect makes what happens is that enemy gets pushed out into another room. The nice thing about that is the spines won't affect our two heroes. The gremlin already has one point of damage on him, but he has a shield, an automatic armor, so it's, he's gonna have four points coming at him. He'll roll two blue dice. And he got two shields, wow! So he, out of five, four, three, two, he just takes two points of damage. That puts him at three health in total. He is at half health. Well, that bounced, there you go, half health. Since we're bashing him out of this room, he's gonna go, into this room and we now don't um, have any issues with his spines yes let's draw our encounter card well this is great we have brute force it says here activate all uh, strength based enemies otherwise activate two enemies well I would love to have one of those enemies be the red enemy but the red enemy is controlled by um, Icarus so Thorgar has to do the two blue ones because you look first at the um, the player's turn, whose player's turn it is, and any enemies that they control. He controls two blue enemies, so we're going to have to actually do both blue enemies and then the red gremlin because of that uh, quickness ability. Each blue gremlin will take one step in and will resolve attacks one at a time. These blue gremlins go towards the person that has the most money, and of course Thorgar has 10 gold. I probably should have left that somewhere. Bummer. So he'll get attacked first. We've got our two dice. Let's see what he gets. Oh, only one point of damage. So we'll roll for his one shield. Come on. Oh, and that's totally a fail. So we're gonna use Thorgard's Divine Aid and re-roll that. Come on, come on, shield. Yeah, all right, he takes no damage from the first blue gremlin. Now the second blue gremlin is gonna jump in. They still don't have, um, they still don't have uh, dominion over this room or they don't have control over the room gosh I can't remember the name uh, because it's two and two and actually it's two and three so we're still okay but we do have to roll two more red dice oh, oh okay this one fell off there we go okay that's two points of damage so because our wonderful Thorgar does have our studded leather let's roll two blue dice we've got a shield and not a shield. So he takes one point of damage. That's not bad. So unfortunately though, that will put him at half health as well because that takes his third damage. And he just lost this coin because that gremlin stole it from him. Bummer. Lastly, because even though we didn't activate the red gremlin, we still have to, he's gonna move into this room and he's gonna attack Thorgar. Fortunately though, it's three to three, so no one is controlling the room, so he'll just do his regular claws attack with three red dice. 
This could really, really, really hurt. Let's see. Okay, only two hits. Ah, uh, come on. Uh, his armor's negated, of course. So now let's see if he gets two shields. He got one shield. <laughs> he is still alive. This puts Thorgar over to four damage. He only has two health left. We're being so risky here. <laughs> But I really want that treasure. So we're going to have Ariel open up this treasure. But that means she's going to have to draw another trap card. So we're going to open this up and let's draw a trap. 